Hello and welcome to Controllers Tech. This is the second video in the AVR series using the Explained Mini Evaluation Board, and in today's video we will see how to use the input button. We will interface the button using the input pin, which we will read in a while loop, and also using the interrupt. The Explained Mini Evaluation Board already has a user button soldered onto the board itself, so we don't need to connect an external button. Here you can see how the button is connected to the board. The pin PC5 is connected to the VCC, so this pin is in the high state by default. When the button is pressed, the pin will be pulled low to the ground. Keep this in mind, as we will use this information to trigger the click in our code. Let's create a new project in the Microchip Studio. Select XC8 Application Project, give some name to the project, and click OK. I have the ATtiny817 microcontroller. Alright the project has been generated. We will use the clock setup from the previous tutorial. Here is the main file from the previous video, let's copy the clock initialization function from here. And we will paste it in our main file. In the main function, initialize the clock. Now we will configure the pin as input, so let's open the datasheet of the ATtiny817. Go to the port register description. Here first the direction register will be used, to set the pin PC5 as the input pin. So we need to write a zero to the fifth position. Also the LED is connected to pin PC0, which needs to be set as output, so write a 1 to the 0th position. Our final data for the direction register is 1 hex. We have already covered the output registers in the previous tutorial. The state of the input pin can be read by the input register. The corresponding bit of this register is set to 1 if the pin is high, and it resets to zero is the pin is low. First we will read the pin state in the while loop, and later we will use interrupt to do the same. So in the while loop, we will read the pin PC5 by monitoring the fifth bit of the input register. If the button is pressed, the pin will be pulled low to the ground, and the fifth bit of this register will reset to zero. When that happens, we will turn the LED on by setting the pin PC0. Now we will wait for the button to release, and the input pin to go high. This is to make sure that we don't get the accidental trigger, which is very common when we press the button. Basically, the LED will remain on as long as the button is pressed. After the button is released, the control will come out of the if loop, and here we will turn the LED off. Let's build the code. We don't have any errors, so run it to the board. You can see the LED is turning on when the button is being pressed. Also, the LED is on as long as the button is pressed. Let's debug the project to understand how the execution works. We will add the breakpoint inside the if loop. Let's run the debugger. When the button is pressed, we hit the breakpoint. The LED is still off as this statement hasn't been executed yet. Let's step over this function. The LED is on now. The button has been released, so this function will not wait for it to happen. And once this statement is executed, the LED turns off. Now you can see the control is not going inside the if loop. Let's resume the debugger again, and press the button. We have hit the breakpoint again, but this time I am keeping the button pressed. As long as the button is pressed, the pin state will be low, so the control cannot come out of this while loop. When the button is released, the control comes out and turns the LED off. So I hope you understood how to read the button state in the while loop. This code is fine as long as there are a smaller number of things inside the while loop, but when there are a lot of statements along with the delays, 
this idea is not going to be effective. Say for example, there is a delay of one second being executed, and if the button is pressed and released in that duration, it will go unnoticed by the if statement. The click is only recognized if the button is pressed at the same time when the if statement is being executed. To avoid such scenario, we can use the external interrupt to identify the trigger. Let's comment out the while loop first. Among the port registers we have the interrupt flags. The corresponding bit of this register is set when the external interrupt is triggered. The bit can be cleared by writing a 1 to the bit. Since we are going to use the PC5 as the external interrupt pin, the bit 5 of this register will be set. Next we have the pin control register. The input sense bits of this register can be used to enable the interrupt. By default, the bits are set to 0, which disables the interrupt, but the input buffer is enabled. We can enable the interrupt for rising edge, falling edge, or for both the edges. Our button is connected to the VCC, so when the button is pressed, it is pulled to the ground. This is the falling edge of the signal. When the button is released, it is pulled back to the VCC, which is the rising edge of the signal. I am going to enable the interrupt for the falling edge, so that the interrupt will be triggered as soon as the button is pressed. To enable the interrupt for the falling edge, we need to write three hex to the input sense bits. The other bits of this register can be used to enable or disable the pull-up resistance, and to invert the input-output level. Let's leave them to default states for now. So we need to write three hex to the zeroth position of this register. After enabling the interrupt for the pin, we need to enable the global interrupt. Include the interrupt header file also. Now once the button is pressed, the interrupt will trigger. We need to write a separate function to handle this interrupt. The parameter of the ISR function is the interrupt vector that needs to be handled. We can find the interrupt vectors in the datasheet of the device. Here is a list of different interrupt vectors available for the AppTiny817. We have the vector for port C, and its name is port C port. Let's set it as the parameter of the ISR function. Now we will write the function to handle the interrupt. The port C interrupt is common for all the pin of this port, so we need to first identify which pin triggered the interrupt. We can do this by reading the interrupt flag register. So let's define a variable, int flags and store the value of the register in this variable. Here we are expecting the interrupt from the pin 5 of this port, so we will check if the fifth bit of this register is high or not. If it is set to 1, this means the interrupt is triggered by the pin PC5. So toggle the LED first, and then clear the flag, by writing a 1 to the bit 5. If any other pin is also set as the external interrupt, you can write another if condition for that pin in the similar way. That is it, let's build and run the code. You can see how the LED state is switched every time the button is pressed. Let's debug this code to understand how this actually works. I am setting a breakpoint here inside the ISR function. Let's press the button now. We have hit the breakpoint. You can hover on the variable to see its current value. Or just add it in the watch expression below. Here the value of the int flags is 20 hex, which means that only the bit 5 is set. We can also see the decimal equivalent of this value. Since the bit 5 is set, our if condition will return true, and if we step over this statement, we will enter inside. The LED is still off, and stepping over this statement will turn it on. Now the next statement will clear the interrupt flag. You can see that after resuming the debugger, 
the control doesn't enter the ISR function until the button is pressed again. This time the LED is turned on, so the toggle statement will turn it off. The int flag is a local variable, so whenever the control goes out of the ISR function, this variable will be optimized out. So far we set the interrupt for the falling edge, so it got triggered as soon as the button was pressed. Similarly, if we set it for the rising edge, the interrupt will trigger when the button is released. And if we set for both the edges, the interrupt will trigger twice, when the button is pressed, and also when it is released. Let's do this, and we will set the input sense to both edges by writing a 1 to the 0th position. Let's build and flash this to the board. You can see the LED remains on for as long as the button is pressed. Actually the first interrupt turns on this LED, and the second interrupt turns it off. So it remains on for as long as the second interrupt is not triggered, basically as long as the button is not released. This is it for the video. I hope you understood how to handle the input button, and the external interrupt. The link to download the code is in the description of the video. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.